Hello there, welcome to Epic Speak, where I help you engage in better English conversations. In today's video, we pick up from where we left off last week and discuss some more commonly confusing words. If you're new here and did not watch that video, welcome, watch it later on after you finish this video, I will link it in the description below. Today, we are going to talk about some more words which have a similar spelling and pronunciation but different meanings and therefore confuse learners. By the end of this lesson, you will learn the right pronunciation, meaning and usage of these words here. Let's get started. The first word pair is lay and lie. These two words cause a great deal of confusion to learners because of their similarities in pronunciation. Let's discuss these two verbs in detail. The first one, to lay, is a verb which means to put something down flat, usually carefully or intentionally. The verb forms are lay, laid, laid and lay and they are always followed by an object. For example, I laid the baby in the cradle, I lay the table early every morning. So I lay the table means I put everything necessary to eat breakfast or lunch on the table. I laid the table this morning. I laid every morning. I laid it this morning. My hen lays an egg every morning means it gives an egg every morning. The verb lie has two meanings. To lie down is to be in a horizontal position or to be in a particular place. The verb forms are lie, lay, laying and lying. They are never followed by an object. Example sentences, I lie down every afternoon after lunch. I lay down yesterday afternoon. The lay here is the past form of lie. We do not say I lied down. The past form of lie down is lay down. When I came home from office, the toys were lying everywhere on the floor. They were in a particular place. They were lying on the floor. I woke up this morning and just lay in bed thinking about how to spend the day. I lay in bed. This is the past form of lie to be horizontal on the bed. I lay in bed thinking about how to spend the day. I laid all my dresses on the bed to pick one for the party. I laid all my dresses. This is the past form of lay, which is to put something flat. To lay something down is to put something down. It's always followed by an object. And to lie is to be in a horizontal position. You lie in bed. I lie down after a heavy lunch. It is not followed by an object. The verb to lie also means to tell a lie and it's a regular verb. The verb forms are lie, lied, lied and lying. I don't lie very often but I lied to you yesterday when I said you looked amazing. The next word pair is flammable and inflammable. Both words mean easily bursting into flame. They are synonyms that look like antonyms. People often think that inflammable is the negative form of flammable, but the prefix in in inflammable means into, not the opposite. So the opposite of these two words is non-flammable or non-inflammable. Perfume is a flammable liquid. Sanitizers are highly inflammable. These two words mean the same thing. Easily being able to burst into flames. The next word pair is died and dead. Died is the past form of the verb die, whereas dead is an adjective which means not alive. Ram's grandfather is dead. He died in an accident. Dead is an adjective. Died 
is a verb. The next verb pair is discover and invent. Although they are not similar in spelling, they are rather confused because people use one word in place of the other. You discover something that has been there all the time unknown to you, like a star or an island. For example, Columbus discovered America. It was always there, but he introduced it to Europe and the rest of the world. Egyptian mummies and buried treasures are discovered years later. Scientists discover new species of plants and organisms all the time. I discovered a new restaurant that serves amazing Italian food. You invent something if you create it for the first time. For example, a time machine. Or if you make something new, like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle created Sherlock Holmes, my favorite sleuth. Sleuth is a word for detective. If you are late for work, you invent a story so that you don't have to hear from your boss. Computers, new machines and technology are invented. When you discover something, you find out about it, usually for the first time. When you invent something, you create something new using your imagination or knowledge. The next word pair is borrow and lend. Again, these words are not very similar in spelling, but people do often confuse which word to use. You could say they are two faces of the same action. Let me explain. If I want you to give me some money so that I can return it at a later time, I'm asking to borrow money from you, right? So if you give me a thousand rupees, I'm borrowing it from you and you are lending it to me. If you're giving the money so that I could return it later, you're lending it and I'm borrowing it. So if I take it, I'm borrowing and if I'm giving it to you, then I'm lending it to you. The next word pair is emigrant with an E and immigrant with an I N. An immigrant leaves his or her country to live in another one, while an immigrant with an I moves into a country to live permanently. For example, if I'm leaving India to live in another country, I'm emigrating, I'm an emigrant with an E. And if I'm coming into India to live in India permanently, not as a tourist, but if I want to live here permanently and I have come into India for that purpose, I'm not an Indian, I'm another national and I've come into India to live in India permanently, then I am an immigrant. The next word pair is fewer and less. Fewer is the comparative form of few. It's used with plural nouns like I eat fewer vegetables than my brother. My brother has fewer responsibilities than me. And less is the comparative form of little. It is used in the sense of a small amount or a small quantity rather than a fewer number. For example, I take less sugar in my tea. This car needs less petrol than that one. Less than is also used with expressions of time and distance. For example, we can say, you have less than 10 minutes to finish this exercise. We have less than four miles to go. The next word pair is avenge and revenge. The words are very close in meaning and even share the same root word venge, which means vindication. The words mean punishing a person for something that they have done but you avenge when you punish someone for doing something wrong and you want to restore balance avenge is often used to imply that punishment is given in the pursuit of justice than for personal retaliation for example the protesters wanted to avenge the man who was killed in police custody. They want that the people responsible should be punished 
not for themselves, but because it's the right thing to do. They want justice. Also think about Marvel's Avengers. They fight against evil villains because they usually want to set things right. Revenge, on the other hand, is often used when you punish someone to get back for a petty offense. For example, my brother told on me that I was playing video games instead of attending the online classes. So, I took revenge by hiding his gaming console. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, and share this video with a friend who's interested in learning English. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon in my next video.